Hello friends, the fish room is rocking along. Let's uh, take a look at what's going on in here. It's uh, pretty busy, a little messy, but uh, that's reality, right? All right, let's start, uh, let's work our way over to the Pleco tank. And my little Plecos are doing great. Let's see if you can see them down here. There's one right there resting. Open up a little more light so you can see them a little better. That should help. There's probably about 20 in there as well as a couple real big ones that you don't see too often. There's a little albino back there. I've moved a couple of them out and put them into the uh, into the 55 gallon. I'm doing a recording uh, and a review of this power generator. Just a beast of a unit and uh, so watch for that. I've just got to send a copy of the video to the manufacturer and get them to sign off on it and then we can go ahead and, and talk about it. So let me get the lighting just right for you. This says Expertmatic filter is working great and you'll notice that I removed the divider Let's turn off the overhead light. There we go. I removed the divider in this uh, 55 gallon. So now the, the uh, silver dollars have the run of the entire of the entire tank. And I think they're liking it. There's four of them in there. And there's some uh, Cooley Loaches as well. There's one of those Plecos back there. There he is behind the heater. The heater is on a, uh, a controller, and so what happens is when the tank hits the desired temperature, the heaters will, it'll stop the power. So see, I have them set at, at 78. So when they hit 78, the power to the heaters goes off. There's two 100 watt aquarium co-op heaters in here, and one, one Expertmatic internal filter that's being used with two compartments instead of all three. When I was using all three, that bottom one would sometimes get too close to the bottom and start to suck up some gravel and then clog up. But it's, uh, it's doing a decent job, you can see. Tank looks good. Here's the 55 gallon planted tank. And it is doing well. I've got some new growth coming up in the middle there. Let me again adjust the light. There we go. So you get some growth uh, there in the middle, some new growth, and that's always a good sign. Nubius look okay. One of them, one leaf looks a little munched, but the rest look good. The fish are doing great. Look at that awesome snail back there. You can see him? That's a pagoda, a pagoda snail. Just a great looking snail. The lemons like, uh, like hanging out over here. I don't know what they're staring at. Staring at the fridge. The Buenos Aires Tetras are all over the place, just like the Serpas. Got some cherry barbs in there. There's that little albino. If you can make them out, there's a little albino down there. Let me do a light adjustment. Part of the cleaning crew. See, this Anubius is doing well. Also, they're just shoved into that piece of driftwood. Cory cats seem to be enjoying life. Three of them in here. Green laser and a couple green lasers and a couple standard Corys. One, I think, no, just one regular standard Cory and a couple green lasers. Where's that whiptail hiding? He's in here somewhere. 
Sometimes he really camouflages himself really well. Oh, there he is. My oddball. This cherry barb, look at that. That cherry barb is really cherry. So I'm happy with how this is going. That's the long view. Who doesn't like the long view? Let's move over here to the 90. They're all on this side already thinking I'm going to feed them. They've already been fed, but of course that doesn't matter, right? Red shoulder severum. I didn't realize how much bigger these silver dollars had gotten until I got those four small ones who were like the size of what these were originally. So these silver dollars have gotten much larger, probably double in size since I picked them up. So I'm gonna have to wait for those four in that other tank to put on some good size before I can add them. There's a red spotted severum. I love severums, beautiful fish. It's an electric blue Cara, looking good. And of course those beautiful geos. Oh, there's the green terror. Let's go around the front. Get a good look at that green terror. Really coming along. There's the geo. Someone asked me what these geos were. They were sold to me as Surimanensis striped earth eaters, but I'm not really sure that's what they are. This one's an AC Heculi. And I think at some point I'm gonna get some albino AC Heculis from the Cichlid Shack. Those are really crazy looking fish, especially when they get the trailers that come off the, the fins, the tail and the dorsal. But the uh, those geos are just really rock stars. Someone said my uh, green terror is probably a male. All my other ones, like my Salvini and my uh, my Jack Dempsey and my Nicaragua, those are all females. So that's my first male. Let's go around here. Here's a holding tank. This is just doing a little bit of uh, quarantine right now. And I'll go ahead and adjust the light. But what I have in here are some guppies, which you've seen before. Some very pretty females, like that one there, and some very attractive males. And they're going to be added to the live bear tank. The colors on that guy. The females have really changed the uh, everybody's attitude in here. The neons are making it. They're looking good, five of them. So I'm going to end up with a school of 10 in the 55. Looking forward to that. 10 neon schooling together. I've also noticed in the um, 55 gallon planted tank how a lot of the um, rasboras, how the five rasboras are schooling. Really, really cool how they're doing that. All right, here's the uh, 20 tall planted tank full of little fry and a lot of water sprite. There's a little a little quarry right there. Picus quarry, really pretty, has little spots. And there's another, I think, just a standard, standard quarry back there in the corner looking really good. 
I was gonna add them to the quarries in the 55, but I think I'll just add some more quarries to this because I know they like to be in groups of five or so, five or more. Some little babies in the back. Can you see the little fry back there? There were about 10 fry in here. There's one over by the rock. I like to hang around by the sponge too. Oh, there's one. There were about 10 of them, so hopefully they're still around. They didn't get munched up. There's a snail, nerite. Is that what you call it? Nerite snail? And you can see the bottom of a pagoda snail hanging off the wood right there. That's a baby that came from the big pagoda snail in the other tank. All the pagoda snails you see are from that one original, original snail. You can see them in here. There's more. Sometimes they're plain, sometimes they're a little more colorful. See some on the back wall there. Love the colors of these uh, Mickey Mouse platies. The male is just relentless. I also have these, these turquoise colored platies, very pretty. And then I'll be adding the uh, liar tail mollies. I've got a harem here, three, three females and one male. We're getting through the small fish first. Here's the betta in the betta duplex. Give you a little more light. Beautiful fish. And his uh, neighbor on the other side of the divider, sort of a candy colored betta. I keep adding some sprite cuttings. See him up there. They like hanging out in the Sprite. They'll just go up there and relax. It's really bright right now. Let me cut down the light a little bit. They love hanging out in the Sprite. feeding them once a day. They get a whole combination of foods. You can see here, I'm feeding them a little bit of this uh, North Fin, Betta Bites. They're also getting a little bit of the Sarah, some of the Sarah color food, uh, Betta, Betta Gran. I'm sure you can make that out. It's a Betta specific food for, from the Sarah company I respect and uh, Bug Bites, Fluvo Bug Bites, specific for Betta. So uh, they get a nice, a nice varied diet. And they seem to be doing well. Here's the uh, 300, little side view of the 300. Got some Christmas lights here that I have on there from the uh, live stream, <laughs> just to give a little bit of a colorful background. This tank is, as you know, seven feet across and uh, just full of very large African cichlids that I picked up from the cichlid shack. In today's live stream, we gave away a Fusco today. That's one of these guys right here. That's a Fusco. Beautiful Nimbochromus, cousin of the Venusus, that yellow blotch, sometimes called a giraffe hap. 
their first cousins, also a cousin of the living stone eye, which I have in here also. It's a living stone eye right here. A short video the other day on odd faces, and I had the uh, the hawk, Aristochromis, and the gar. See where's the gar? There's the gar. Such an odd ball. The face on that guy. I should have included include the eye biter too. Eye biters have really unusual faces. Look at this guy. Love the blue that you get on an eye biter. Like a steel, steel blue, just a very pretty color. Buchachromis. One of my favorite all time Buchachromis. Spectabilis. Very different from the Buchachromis Rhodesia yellow in attitude. This is the Rhodesia yellow. Look at that uh, tangerine tiger right there. Love the colors of a tangerine tiger. This is a big one, big protomelis. If you have protomelis, tangerine tigers, Taiwan reefs, fish like that, you gotta make sure you put some veggies. I always put some veggies in their diet. Helps with, digest, uh, with their digestion, keeping their digestive tract clean. You see the strigatus back there? It tends to get a little bit neglected. But this is a strigatus. Look at the egg spots on the anal fin. Very, very pretty. Let's see if I can get them to come over here a little bit. Come on. Come on. Over here. Over here. Trying to coax them over so you can see them in better light. Gets a little bit of that blue like the, uh, a little bit like the eye biter. This is a turquoise hap. You can guess why. See the color on his body. He's trying to get some beautiful turquoise. Here's my autopharynx tetrastigma. Love this sand diver. Again, sort of a metallic sheen to his body. It's the Coingi. Very pretty fish. Cameron never does him justice. Every one of his uh, scales seems to have its own unique color. What a face, huh? Love the colors of a uh, autopharynx. Similar to an insignus. Or not an insignus, but a... Uh, love the colors of uh, an autopharynx tetrastigma. This one, of course, has one eye, but still seems to be getting along fine. Holds his own. Love the blaze, the forehead on this Venusus. Just spectacular. All right, let's finish up here with the 210 gallon. We'll finish up here with the 210 gallon, starting off with this beautiful Vieja. I love the pink that you're seeing in the body. Some black splotches pushing over 10 inches. Just a beautiful fish. Doesn't seem to really get into it with anybody. 
but nobody gets into it with, with him either. Are you familiar with viejas? What do you think? Do you think this one's a male or a female? Oscars are camera hogs. They love getting in the middle of everything. Look at the Salvini. We've established that uh, she's a female because of that red belly. Look at the little blue spots on the top of the body. I think someone called them spangles. I might be getting that wrong, but sometimes people ask me if that's a saltwater fish. At any rate, the Oscars are doing great. Red tiger and red tiger albino. This is a chocolate cichlid, very docile cichlid. Eventually might get moved over to the 90, depending how he does. This is another chocolate cichlid. I just noticed a little bit of damage on the tail. So somebody's harassing the chocolates. Maybe they're harassing each other. Here's the Nicaragua we haven't seen. Seen this guy for a while. Or should I say this gal? It is a female. Beautiful fish. I had the male as well, but I ended up rehoming him because it got a little bit too, too crazy when they would pair up to mate. There's the Jack Dempsey back there. Doesn't really want to get into it with anybody, but nobody messes with him. He just stays back there and protects his rock. Also a female. Hey, Nicaragua, camera hog. I'm trying to get a picture of the Jack Dempsey. Move over, buddy. There we go. Very similar markings to the, uh, similar marking to the green tear. Hopefully they'll get along when I have them both in the same tank because the green tear is almost due and ready to come over. What a face. Let's do a few close-ups then we'll end off. That's the chocolate. There's the fire mouth. Beautiful fire mouth. Always trying to get into it with the, with the uh, Nicaragua. Oh, there they go. Right on cue. Oscars. Just crazy markings on the body. Both of these Oscars have this O, O in the back by the tail. Really cool. You guys gonna battle again? Jack Dempsey just bored with all of it. Well, there's your full fish room update. Comment below, let me know what you think. We'll talk about this and a whole lot more on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And let me know what you think about the tanks, any fish you think I'm missing, anything you think I should be doing with the tanks that I'm not. I'm always learning and that learning very often comes from you. So I appreciate that. Always be learning, that's the motto of the channel, right? All right, my friends, that's it for me. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and sub subscribe if you haven't already and consider becoming a Patreon monthly supporter. Keeps everything rolling around here. Thank you, my friends. Big shout out to the Cichlid Shack, the Aquarium Co-op, and the Super Cichlids, Super Cichlids, who recently came through with an awesome order of food. Thank you, my friends. Bye-bye.